Coming up on Carolina this week, we're going to hear from Dennis DiSabato. He's running for state representative of the District 56. That's Carolina Forest. We're also going to hear from R.A. Johnson. He's also running for state representative. He's running for the western parts of Horry County. And you're going to meet a dog who represents a firehouse. Carolina This Week starts right now. This is Carolina This Week. Carolina This Week with Tim McGinnis. The June primaries are coming up quickly. This week, we're going to hear from more candidates, this time two candidates for state representative. And then a little bit later, we're going to hear about a dog that represents a firehouse and how you can help out the organization that helped that dog. But first off, we'll talk about state representative for the state representative for District 56. That's all of Carolina Forest. Last week, we had Mike Ryhall on. He's running against Dennis DiSabato for the Republican nomination. Dennis DiSabato joins me this morning. Dennis, you ran the first time around for District 56, which is a newly created district. You right. lost to Mike Ryhall. Now you're running again. Yes. Why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, quite frankly, I believed two years ago that I was the right person for the job, and Nothing's occurred in the last two years that really changed my opinion about that. Um, I believe that I can give more effective leadership to the community. I think I can deliver more conservative votes to the community. I think that's what the district wants. It's not just Carolina Forest. It's Forest Brook. It's areas along Highway 90 all the way up almost to Longs. And, you know, there's a lot of needs out there, and, and there has not been a lot done to support some of the needs out there. And I think that I can do a better job of representing that community, and, and uh, that's why I've decided to run again. For people who don't remember who you are from the last time, sure. who are you? Um, I'm Dennis I'm a, DiCibato, yes, we know sir. that, we got that out of the uh, way. I'm a, I'm a real estate attorney in the Carolina Forest area. Um, I've been involved in uh, conservative and Republican leadership at a grassroots level for seven or eight years now. Um, I was a founding member of the Carolina Forest Civic Association. We've done a lot of grassroots work to get things accomplished in Carolina Forest and, uh, and um, Recently well, engaged in, in starting a family here in Horry County. Congratulations. Thank you. Talking about Carolina Forest, which is the fastest growing part of the state, one of the fastest growing parts of the country. Sure. Obviously, talk to some people who live in Carolina Forest, and they'll tell you one of the big needs is infrastructure. You need to relieve the traffic on Carolina Forest Boulevard as well as Highway 501. What's your plan? What would you do in Columbia to make that happen for the people of Carolina Forest? Well, you know, I would do things differently than what Mike's been doing. Um, what I would first do is I would cut and eliminate some of the waste in Columbia in an effort to make sure that there's more money to spend. The government really belongs in just very few businesses. One of those businesses is roads. That's one of our biggest concerns, not just in Carolina Forest, but along Highway 90. Once you complete International Drive, there's going to be stress on the Highway 90 roads as well. I've talked to a lot of voters out there recently. They're concerned about road widening and turn lanes over there as well. Um, we desperately need it in Carolina Forest. So we need to eliminate waste and we need to make sure that the state legislature is, is funding local governments the way that they're supposed to. And we need to make sure that, um, that we're fighting to get our fair share back from the state government. Horry County, as you know, is one of the highest tax paying counties in the entire state. We get very little back for our, our money. And I think that that needs to change and we need a leader who's gonna go up there and stand up for those residents that he serves and try and get that money back here so that we can do the things that we need like build roads. It's not enough just to you know, be kept apprised of what's happening. You've got to actively go out there and do something to affect change. And in my opinion, Mike hasn't done that. I-73 is something a lot of people talk about. We talk about, I think, with just about every person who's running for elective office in this area. Now, obviously, this money isn't going to come from the state. Most of it's going to come from the federal government. Mm -hmm. Could come from tolls. A study's being done now to, to, to look into that. What would you do from the state level to work to get I-73 here? Well, I'm not opposed to I-73, but I think there's probably more cost-effective and um, probably more reasonable ways to get interstate travel into Horry County. Uh, from what I'm hearing, it's a reasonable expectation that we can have uh, SC-31 connect to Interstate 74 in North Carolina within four to five years. So I would do more to help move that project forward necessarily than, than going after I-73. I think that that would alleviate strain on a lot of our thoroughfares. If we can get some more interconnectivity through our local communities, we could get strain off of 501. And, and I think that that's one of the things that I'd like to do, just going back just a second, just trying to get more funds to our local government. And using the seat in Columbia 
as a bully pulpit over the county council saying, if you want me to go to bat for you to get local government funding to do the things that you need to do here, well, then you've got to start delivering on the promises that you've given to my constituents. And that includes not pushing back roads like International Drive, getting, getting turn lanes and getting you know, Carolina Forest Boulevard widened, getting turn lanes on a Highway 90, making sure that those roads are safer and they're well policed. And, and those are the things that I would do if I were in Columbia. Let's talk about jobs now. StarTech has announced that they're coming to Carolina Forest near the intersection of uh, the River Oaks Drive and International. That's obviously going to need a lot of infrastructure work, but 600 jobs, nothing to sneeze at. What kind of jobs would you like to see come to the area and how will you build up the infrastructure to help to in attract those companies to the area? I think, I think the Economic Development Corporation has been doing a fantastic job of bringing more jobs to Horry County. And StarTech is certainly not something to sneeze at, but it's 600 call center jobs. They're not relatively, they're not relatively high wage jobs. They're not low wage jobs, but they're not high wage jobs. I think we need to do more to attract manufacturing to this area. And unfortunately, the only way to do that is to put a major thoroughfare uh, interstate connectivity to Horry County. So that way you give manufacturing firms the ability to get their products in and out of the area. Probably need to do some more with the Port of Georgetown, try and get that dredged and ha have some accessibility to the county from there. But I-74, I-73, doing more to clear up US 501, light synchronization on 501, upgrades on 501. You know, my opponent talked about finding funding for the 501 um, road widening towards the beach. I just I want to clear up a misconception. He claims to have found funding, but he pushed the project back from 2016 to 2020. That's a bait and switch. Um, we need leaders that are going to be in Columbia that aren't promising projects. They're delivering on them, and I want to be one of the people who helps deliver on them. What's something that you want to do that that hasn't been done, or something that that would be a be something new that you'd bring to the table for the people who live in the area? Well, I mean, there's a lot of um, there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed from a legislative standpoint. Um, the Conway water issue is one of them. Um, you know, th that was the main focus of my, you know, campaign two years ago. Uh, roads was another main focus. I really think that what, I, what I'd like to do is, is be more conservative in my approach to how money is being spent, fight to make sure that there's funds coming back here to Horry County, and then make sure that the county is using those dollars wisely to help fund infrastructure programs. Um, that's our main concern in the areas that I represent or would represent, infrastructure. All right. Yeah. Last question for you. Once again, you would represent Carolina Forest area. You mentioned up toward Highway 90, parts of Longs, Forest Brook. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to the people who live in those areas? Why should they vote for you? There's three reasons that I think people should vote for me. The first one is it's, it's new leadership. Um, to bring about real results. Um, I will not waste the taxpayer dollars the way our current incumbent is. I would fight to make sure that there's more money coming back home so that it's spent on projects here in Horry County. And my promise and my pledge is that if in two years you haven't seen those more conservative votes and that decisive leadership, you should vote me out of office. If you're happy with the incumbent's record right now, vote for him again. Um, but also, I take a more a direct approach to how to legislate. Um, I've told people, my goal is not for you to put your trust in me and let me go to Columbia and make decisions on my own. I want more feedback from the community. I want to, um, I want to have town halls. We haven't had town halls. I don't want to be a full-time legislator. I don't think people want a full-time legislator. I want to be here on the ground talking to voters and getting their feedback and input on what things are going on in Columbia so that we can address those issues with their input, not on my own decision. And, and I think that's how a legislator, a, a representative, should handle the business of legislating in Columbia. All right, Dennis yeah. DiSabato, candidate for District 56, State House seat. Thanks for being with me this morning. Thank you very much. Right, stay with us. We'll be right back with more Carolina This Week. Welcome back to Carolina. This week, we continue our conversations with candidates running for state house seats. This is R.A. Johnson running for House District 58. That represents parts of the western parts of Horry County, includes Ainer, Gallivans Ferry, and I imagine some of Conway as well. Parts of Conway, that is correct. All right. Well, thanks for being with me this morning. And for those who don't know who you are, you did run for Horry County Council back in 2010. 
But uh, tell people who you are and why you're running for the state house. Well, I'm R.A. Johnson. I'm a lifelong candidate of, of um, Horry County. I was born and raised in Ainer, South Carolina, graduated from Ainer High School, went on to Coastal Carolina University, and returned home to uh, operate the family farm that's been in the family for over 200 years. Um, got strong connections, and I was encouraged to run for District 58 upon the retirement of uh, State House Rep Liston Barfield. You, you mentioned that you're in agriculture, and you're also in that western part of the county, and Horry County is so unique because we have tour, you know, the heavily laden tourist districts that are toward the coast, and then we have this rural kind of agriculture slash industrial western parts of the county, which is really where you'll be focusing. So I guess it's kind of prudent to start talking to you about jobs because a lot of the jobs that are going to be coming to Horry County in the future could be coming to the western part of the county with the new uh, kind of gun alley that's, that's going sure. in and out there. What do you want to see happen as far as bringing jobs to Horry County, and how do you want to see District 58 play a part in that? Well, District 58, as you know, has the Cool Spring Industrial Parks. We recently received the uh, gun manufacturing plant out there, and we as a state got to continue to recruit jobs to this area, and naturally jobs coincides with infrastructure, so we have to have the infrastructure in order to bring the jobs to the area. Um, agriculture is a big part of our district out in 58. Um, as a farmer myself, a family farmer, um, in recent years we have the introduction of peanuts to this area, so diversity on the ag uh, side of things. And also, um, like I say, there's plenty of room for growth for the gun manufacturing. Um, we have adequate workforce here to take on the new jobs, and that would be a, a great addition to District 58. You mentioned infrastructure, and, and that's something that every every candidate <laughs> running for, whether it's county council, state rep, anything, you got to talk about infrastructure because if you don't have the roads, if you don't have the drainage, if you don't have different things, you're not going to be able to get businesses to come here. I-73 is a big thing that a lot of people talk about. Are you a proponent of bringing I-73 to Horry County? Yes, I-73 uh, needs to come to Horry County, but also we need to focus on the current infrastructure we have in District 58. Um, we have a lot of roads in disrepair, and they actually need resurfacing. Um, we have a delegation up in D.C. with the um, ex addition to Tom Rice with the 7th Congressional District, who is pushing for I-73. But until then, we need to concentrate on our local roads. Um, just the other day, I had a young lady who told me on her way to work that she uh, got a flat tire, actually, out in District 58 from hitting a pothole. So there are tremendous issues with roads and infrastructure in our area. And the only way to get the jobs here is to have adequate infrastructure. And South Carolina and Columbia has to get their priorities straight, and we have to get infrastructure in order to bring the jobs to Horry County and District 58. What kind of projects would you be looking at targeting first off when you get up there? Would you really be kind of trying to, to bring home to District 58? Well, naturally, with the industrial park out in District 58, you know, the in manufacturing jobs. Also, we like to... Uh, Expand the agriculture side of things for District 58. Um, Hugh Weathers, Commissioner of Agriculture, has started the South Carolina Certified Program, and we need to expand on that, buy local, um, and those kind of things. That would be very beneficial to our District 58 and uh, all of Horry County. Are there things that you'd like to see maybe working? You know, we talked about, obviously, tourism being so big on the eastern part of the county. Would you like to see the eastern and the western parts of the county maybe bridge a little bit and bringing some of that, what you have to offer out there, into Sure, the tourism? agri-tourism would be a, a big proponent. Um, it's starting to come, you know, like uh, Boone, Hall and Boone Hall and Charleston Boone Hall Farms. Mm -hmm. um, we could do that here, and it's starting to come with the vineyards, um, La Bellamy Vineyards, but we need to do something for District 58 to get the tourism out this way. But also we need to focus on non-seasonal jobs and get some manufacturing jobs, some industry in this area, um, so we'll have year-round work. How about education? That's something that lawmakers have to take a vote on every once in a while. What do you want to see as far as education goes? You mentioned you graduated from Ainer High School, one of the top-rated high schools actually in the county and in the state. So in, what do you want to see happen as far as education In the state, goes? I actually yeah. graduated from Ainer High School the year Ainer High School won the prestigious Palmetto Finest Award, so I was a, um, proud to be a part of that. Yes, education in the state as a whole is very imperative um, for us to have adequate education. We need to have a fundamental look at the way our education system set up, and as Columbia, I would love to be a voice for that. 
we can't keep just throwing money at it. We had to fundamentally have an overhaul for our system. Would you like to see more school, a way to make more schools kind of like your alma mater? Sure, sure. Um, like you say, Anner High School has proven time and time again that is number, I think number five in the state and has been in the top of the state in any way. And yes, uh, it is a model school. Um, it is my alma mater and I'm very <laughs> proud of it as you would imagine, so sure. yes. Now, as far as agriculture goes, do you think that, do you, is, there, is, is your part of the county, is bringing industry in something that maybe is, a, is somebody who is, who's, who works in agriculture, maybe you don't wanna see so much industry. Maybe you don't wanna see the development happen in the western part of the county. How, how do you stand on sure, just we more to, development coming out that we way? We have to have a, a fine balance there. Like I say, we have set aside such areas as Cool, Spring, cool Springs Industrial Park to bring that in. But when you bring in jobs into industries like into the Cool Spring Industrial Park, you're bringing in a ton of folks and a, a ton of economic impact to help the whole county and District 58 from uh, convenience stores to real estate market values and you know to help the county as a whole. It's got to be a fine balance but we can surely find that balance. Well why should the voters of District 58 put you in office? Well. <laughs> I would like to ask uh, folks for their vote because uh, I'm a lifelong resident of uh, District 58, uh, born and raised here. Um, I'd like to take my small business experience to Columbia and be a strong agri <laughs> proponent <laughs> to get jobs and roads and infrastructure in this area fixed. R.A. Right. Johnson running for State House District 58. Thanks yes, for being with me this Thank morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. All right, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to bring a dog out on the set. It's a story you don't <laughs> want to miss involving the Horry County Fire Rescue Department. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Carolina this week. I have a couple of special guests with us here today. This is the dog. The dog's name is Dollop. This is the firefighter. The firefighter's name is Ricky Givens with Station 7, Horry County Fire Rescue. Thanks for being with us this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem. I uh, just stumbled across my Facebook page, and I thought it would be Great to shine the spotlight on Dollop here actually belongs to Station 7. To Station 7. We got her about uh, three weeks ago, um, and we found out pretty much from day one that there was uh, something going on with her when she had to go to the bathroom. And uh, <laughs> we went to took her to the vet. We thought maybe it was her food, maybe it was worms, and it ended up that they uh, diagnosed her with a broken tail, which was affecting the nerves in her spine and not allowing her to go to the bathroom correctly. So you, you, you go to a vet, you find out that this is going to be, this isn't a cheap fix. This is no, an expensive no. fix. They, they quoted us somewhere in the, the range of $3,000. Um, I got in touch with a friend of mine in Tennessee who ran a dog rescue, and she put me in contact with a lady by the name of Jennifer Smith that runs Noah's Ark Rescue, which is somewhere between Charleston and Savannah, mm -hmm. closer to the Savannah side. Um, that was on a Tuesday. Uh, on Friday, they had her in Charleston having surgery. Wow. And it was about six grand. We had to have a neurosurgeon go in and fix her. Wow. And the neurosurgeon is very, uh, he's very happy with the way the surgery went. He thinks everything's going to be real successful for her. So I mean, and th this would have been tough to come up with $6,000. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just by yourselves. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, we honestly, when we contacted the rescues originally, it was hoping to find her a home that she'd be able to live outdoors because she wasn't going to be able to be an indoor dog from what we thought. Um, okay, sit down. <laughs> but uh, <Hey> Dollop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they were able to uh, have a successful yeah. surgery, and um, and this is all thanks to Noah's Ark. Nothing really comes out of your pocket. Maybe nope. getting down there and getting no, back. They're actually probably going to do the spaying for us once that this is healed. Mm -hmm. they're, they're big on uh, spaying and neutering of the animals. Um, they are they deal with nothing but injured, sick, and abused animals. So. And, and Dollop has another special connection to the firehouse is how you got her. Yes, yes. Um, she was our captain's uh, who passed away in February. It was his last puppy. Mm -hmm. And uh, his ex-wife actually brought, us, brought her to us a couple weeks back. You were just being a handful today. <laughs> hey, Dollop. Hey, look over here. So this is kind of the legacy of your of a former captain with you yep. all. And J.T. Brady. He was a, uh, a wonderful man. Great guy, great boss. So Dollop missed, has missed. a lot of special meanings now. Yeah, that's actually what her collar here says. It says Dollop, and it's got her number. And on the back of it, if I can read, I don't have my glasses <laughs> on. Horry County Fire Rescue in memory of 
tweet station seven. Yeah. So now you decided that you, you and I imagine it's not unusual for firefighters to hold different types of uh, fundraising events yeah, we help do, out uh, in the community. We we do a lot of things. We um, our union does a lot of things with uh, charity fundraising. Our uh, firefighter relief fund does has a lot of uh, things started that helps out with the community. So and you're going to give back to Noah's Ark now. Yeah, the, everything that uh, the benefit that we're having on the third is going to be a chicken bog and barbecue uh, cookout, and everything, all the proceeds are going directly back to Noah's Ark. And you're having it at Bass Pro Shops. In fact, we have the information. We can put that up on the screen real quick. Hey. Noah's Ark fundraiser. It's going to happen Saturday, May 3rd. That's next Saturday at the Bass Pro Shops, which is in Myrtle Beach near the Myrtle Beach Mall. Yep. It's going to happen from noon until 5 p.m., like you mentioned, chicken bog. I chicken bog, barbecue, burgers, dogs. Bring the drinks. kids. Bring everybody. Bring everybody out. Bring your animals out. We'll have dog okay. bones out there for the animals. And I guess people probably we'll be able it. to uh, meet Dollop over yep. there. Dollop will be there. <laughs> Hopefully, she'll have a little more room to play. What are you Dollop doing? has a lot of puppy in her. <laughs> oh yeah, she's only uh, she's just about four months hey, old now. So. All right. Well, go out and help Dollop Saturday, May 3rd. Ricky Gibbons with Station 7, Horry County Fire Rescue. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having Dollop, us. Dollop, glad you're with us this morning. All right. Stay with on. us. We'll be right back. <laughs>